hello friends today in this tutorial i will be showing you how to send the post request using axios and basically we will be using this rest api which is a fake rest api for developers so it is used for testing http bin dot org so with the help of uh, axios library we will be posting a post request we are sending will be post request so this will be the website http bin dot org so basically it's a simple http request and response service where anyone can send a get request post request put request delete request all those four endpoints are supported and basically it returns a response back so it is simple testing api for developers around the world so if you don't have any sort of api you can use this website api to test out different endpoints so one such endpoint we will be testing which will be http bin.org slash post so if you just put here slash post here we will be testing we will posting some data you can see here method not allowed because this method is not allowed for the requested URL so you need to uh, we will be using axios for posting this request here let me show you a very basic example uh, let me go to my open with live server so basically we will be sending text and images both inside the axios post request you have you can see here there are two input fields out there and the choose file button here you can select any image file also if I select here this is this is the name of the person username and the image file so let me select this image file and there is a button called as send data and then if I click this button a post request will be made here to the server if I click this button you will now see a response will be back this is a JSON response which will be back from that HTTP bin.org website you can see that this is a fake rest api which we are using to make a post request to the server and whenever that post request is made successfully this json response will be returned to us alongside with the headers here you will see content length content type is application slash json and the data is returned to us you can see that the files here this is the base 64 code of the image that we have uploaded here you will see that this is a code here then this is the form element id is automatically generated username that we have passed here which is dfg you can see that alongside with all the head headers here which is accept application slash json content length uh, host here which is http bin.org origin this is our origin here you can see that all these values are automatically set so we don't need to uh, write any complex code this axios library solves the problem of all setting up all the headers which are very much necessary for making post request or any sort of http request so for doing this process guys as i already told you we are will be using axios so axios is uh, very uh, you can see it, it has its own website axios http.com it's a http request library it's a promise based HTTP client for the browser and Node.js you can even no use it inside Node.js as well so a promise will be returned to you you need to just handle it by the dot then syntax it also supports async and await we will use also be uh, like to tell you how you can uh, use it with uh, uh, async and await so this is a CDN that you need to copy if you are using it at the browser side or if you are using it at the node side you this is a simple command npm install axios so now let's get started guys i have given all the example code in the description of the blog post so this is the blog post i have written on coding siksha so if you want to get all the source code you can go to the blog post link i have given this inside the description of the live stream so please hit the like button if you are watching it for the very first time so now let me start building this application from scratch so this is our index.html file so here we will say axios send post request using form data 
So here guys, first of all, we need to include the CDN. You can even type on Google Axio CDN. It will come up Axio CDN. You can go to this website, just copy the CDN here. Just after the title, make a script tag, paste the CDN like this. So now you can use the Axios library inside your browser, inside this project. So for doing this guys, we will have a simple form tag. So inside the form, we will be having, uh, we will be giving it an ID of form. And inside this, we will have uh, uh, two, three input fields. First input field for, uh, let's suppose, the name of the person. So this will be input type text. So name attribute we will be giving it is equal to name and this should be required and the next one so basically we can even give, give a label that uh, enter name. So now if you refresh your browser you will see a simple input field here enter name. So here the person will enter their name here and uh, after this we will have another input field for the username. So here we will say enter username. So input type again this will be of type text. So name here we need to change it to username. This is again it's required HTML form validation. And lastly we will select image. So select image. So this time this will be the type will be file here. And here we will be selecting name is equal to image. This is also required. So if you now see there is three input fields out there name, username and select image. And then we need to have a button to submit the form. We will send send request. So you will now see a send request button. So you can see please fill out this field. This is form validation. You can see that. Please select a file. So this is all coming because of this required attribute. So this makes it a mandatory field. We need to uh, provide data for these fields. So this is all the basic HTML guys. We are not styling it. We are just wanted to tell you the logic behind uh, sending the post request. So now what we can do is that we can write the basic JavaScript for this. So script. So here what we will do is that we will first of all get the reference to the form. Here we will say dot document dot get element by ID. And here we will pass the ID that we have given to the form element which is ID is equal to form. So here we will pass the ID. So after passing it we will simply say attach an event listener. So there are various event listeners out there. Either if you click a button if the value changes or there is a submit if the form submits so this is the event handler which will automatically get executed so first of all we need to prevent the auto submission of the form so we will call e dot prevent default and next we need to construct a form data object so which will be sent as a post request using axios so we need to construct it form data new form data so this is built in inside the browser guys so this is a great approach by which you can wrap all the data which is containing inside a form and then send it inside a http request so basically as you can see we have uh, given the name attributes to each of the field here which is name username and image so for form data it is mandatory that you have give these name attributes so if you have given these name attributes to all the input fields, so here we can simply pass the reference of the form like this. So then automatically this will uh, scrape all the details of this input fields. If you have provided these name attributes, these are very much mandatory for form data. So now in the next step, we can perform our post request using Axios. So now to perform the post request guys, we can simply use the post method. So basically it is saying that a string containing the URL to the which the request is sent. 
so here we will provide the url which will be http bin dot org slash post so this is the url guys that we are making a post request to it you will see that and then we need to pass the data in the second argument the data is con contained you will see form data so now as i to already told you this is a promise based library promise based http client so we need to handle this using dot den so this will be the callback function which will be retrieved whenever the promise is resolved so this will contain the response to us so we can simply console log the response and also in case of any any error here we can catch that error by using error like this we can say that console log error that's it so this is a promise based uh, approach guys whenever there is a promise based http client you need to handle like this you need to handle the dot then syntax and dot catch i think it's a very uh, beautiful syntax in order to write code because you you clearly know that which url you are performing the request to this is the data and this is the response which is coming inside dot then and if any sort of error take place we are handling it inside dot catch so basically if you now open with live server and if you inspect element go to console so if you now enter the details choose the file click send request so now you can see that guys the data is returned to us you can see all the image it has taken the name attributes that we have given to the input elements you can see this is the image here which we selected so image is coming so this is a base 64 code and inside this form we have this name username which we have written here i can change this here again send the request again this data will be returned to us you can send unlimited number of times you can see the data here contained inside you can see that this is the image you can also change the image so the base 64 code will be returned you can see that this is the base 64 code you can see that and the nice thing about it guys this is the name attribute if i change the name attribute to something else uh, like this it is all coming through this name attribute so name attribute is and whenever you make that change uh, and let me use so you and i you need to make sure yeah just put a name attribute and then if you again choose your file click send request so that name attribute will be there you can see that inside files this is i uh, n is the name u is the username so this is all dependent upon this name attribute this is the most important thing to note so let's suppose you want to send uh, a separate id as well which is not there inside the form in, a, in the form data object what you can do is that there is a method out there which is called as append method you can use this method to pass things which are not there inside the form so many a times you need to send a dynamically generated id so that it is stored inside the database so that way we can send the id it is automatically generated date dot now like this this is a so you can use the append method so it is appended inside the form data object so now if you refresh it a separate parameter will be there which will be called as id if you see here click send request now basically you will see that there will be a separate data which will be there this is the image and this is the id this is unique every time because date dot now will be unique every time so that's why if you again send it so if you check the id will be different every time you can see 166127 166127934690606 you can see that it is completely different so in this way you can send out multiple values which are not present inside the input form using the append method
and also you can uh, follow the async await approach as well so just make it this async and if you don't want the promise page approach you can do like this get the response like this and use the await keyword so this is following the async and await so now basically you can surround this using try catch block for error handling so try catch and if any sort of error take place you can simply console log the error that's it this is the async and await approach if you now see here this will still work Uh, let me see what is happening here form data. Oh, sorry. We haven't uh, Console log it so we need to console log response So now you will see the response will be coming back. This is again uh, Successfully now we are using async await instead of promise based client here. We are using async await like this and for the error handling if any sort of error take place we are surrounding this code try inside try catch block so if I make a uh, mistake in the address so this is a invalid URL so now the error will take place so you will now see error if I click send request if you check the console there will be a error which will be there which is error network axios error like this so in this way you can handle the error handling using try catch block that you can see here. So in this way guys you can make a post request using axios and for, uh, send data such as text and images to a REST API called as HTTP bin. So it's very simple. I have shown you step by step if you want the full source code you can go to the description of the blog post to get all the source code so please hit the like button subscribe the channel and also comment how you like this video and i will be seeing you in the next live stream